Greetings. Welcome to the Kingdom Cultural Center. I was viewing my <laughs> my last video, so I think it was 479, 478. I seem a little out of it, um, only because at that particular time I was uh, my body, my, my my spirit was good, real me inside, and but my body was kind of you know out of it. But I want to thank you today for allowing me to come once again. And, and express to you and urge you about the kingdom and um, the kingdom government. And like once I, I say it again, from time to time, I'll say this, that um, this is not a religious setting. It's not about religion. It's about the kingdom government. And my name is W.R. Lucci, and I am an ambassador of the kingdom. In other words, what an ambassador does, he only speaks of his government. I'm not going to talk about this one, talk about that one, downrate this one. Not going to do that because this kingdom message is eternal. It's an eternal message. When the king came here, he took up a body. He came here, he expounded the kingdom message. It's an internal. In other words, what I teach you, what comes out of my mouth and my heart is permanent. You live by it, it will help you to succeed. And I want, being that I just said that, excuse me, I want you to realize this one thing that if you, those of you, um, those of you that um, are kingdom citizens, who are filled with the Spirit. I want you to understand that. You can have the Holy Spirit and not be subject and not and not be subject to it and you want to do your own thing. And that has happened with a lot of religious individuals um, which call themselves Christian or the Baptist, Methodist, whatever. And But I want to tell you that the kingdom government is God's government and you're abiding, he, he's abiding in you through the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to, oh boy, I'm so excited. I want to, I have something here that I was just writing down. And I was in the map in my kitchen, which is a small, my whole place is only 800 and some, I think 700 and some feet. And, uh, but it doesn't take much because God said he'll take care of me. So he's doing that. I want to reach out and thank all of you. Uh, these here, And then some. This is not all the countries that um, we have reached and are reaching. It's just a fragment. I looked in on our website and saw on, on our board, map board in the kitchen and saw that, wow. I didn't know we touched so many people. That's why I have to maintain the kingdom message. That's why I'm not going to be talking about this country, that country. The only thing I'm going to tell you is how to operate in the country you're in. Now, I'm going to thank you, many of the countries that we talked to. This is just a fraction. It's Kenya, Solomon Islands, uh, Marawi, uh, that's in uh, uh, the Filipino Islands. And this is just a fraction, by the way. Um, Johannesburg, Cape Town, South Africa, South Korea, Bangalore, India, Nigeria. We also go Bangladesh, um, uh, Zambia, uh, Napier, uh, it's That's in New, in New Zealand. I can go on. In, in, in the country where I reside at, we have a lot of people. Uh, I saw a lot of them on there, but it's not as many. But, but now let me tell you the difference. I know I'm talking a little bit too fast, and I'm just trying to calm down. Um, many of the people, those of you in other countries, I want you to understand this. When you embrace the kingdom, Drop that religious tradition and everything you got to do because you only have to obey King Jesus. And he left the Holy Spirit down here for us to give us, to guide us. 
He said he would not leave us alone before he left as often. So I want you to embrace his word. His word, God's word, will keep you during the time of turbulence in your life, in your neighborhood. Trust me. I want you to understand that. Um, the other day, my wife and I, we went to, um, I had an appointment to go to the doctor. The eye doctor. And um, what I was kind of disappointed last time I went there to him, but my wife had to be there with me because I'm somewhat straightforward and um, to the point. And um, I, 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 that's one of the things I have to, I work on. I'm constantly working on because some people get, get offended by truth. Sometimes it comes out kind of harsh from me. They may consider it harsh, but I, when I give it to them, they have no problem in understanding what I just said. Now, I may offend them. That's not my design to do so. But I went to the doctor. And when I went to him, he was the guy that I listened to. And I hear him talking. He told me all that. Now, um, through last time, or one, of the, uh, uh, one of our sessions, um, I, I mentioned to him how he said this uh, about cancer and whatnot. And I don't believe I'm dying of cancer. When, when, when my purpose is done, my wife knows that. My son knows that. Then he'll take us because I'm going to stay in line with his word, regardless of what religious people. Mega churches are not in God's plan, never was. Okay. Um, Jesus always dealt with a small group, always, my king, when he was here. But back to the doctor, I told him point blank to show you how God, the king, will take care of you. But you, you, you've got to keep this in mind. Faith in his word is your greatest asset. It's your greatest commodity. Remember that. Faith in his word. Faith has not have an object. In his word, when the king speaks, you embrace it. Because his word is law. He said he'll take care of me. He said he'll take care of my wife. He said he'll take care of my son. He did so. He's doing so. And you walk according to his word. Not half-stepping. Okay, and what it was, I told the doctor when we sat down there, my wife came in with me. She says, honey, I want to go in with you to make sure you, you stay uh, uh, on focus, on point. I'm always on point. Sometimes I get a little, I start uh, uh, elaborating. And I told him, I said, look, doctor, last time I was here, I was just here. My eye had, was swollen up, and, and I, I came in, and I paid you, and I, 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 I felt like I went to the supermarket and paid the, the, the cashier for something that a merchandise I didn't get. From that point on, I told him, and I had him sitting right there so he couldn't walk away. You know, he was, he was getting interested. So I says, I says, well, that day I went, and about two days, I, I, on my way home, I was driving, and I said, my wife wasn't with me at the time, and I said, Father, you made me, you created me, you know all about me. Now, can you handle me, please? I got a problem here because that doctor really pissed me off. And he really did. And the, and the nurses, the people there, they really kind of annoyed me, too, because they told me stuff that I already, already knew. It's like they were trying. I was saying to myself, well, they so, think they're talking to a dummy? So what transpired was, I'm telling you, so I want you to see how God works. I'm his son. I'm an ambassador. I shouldn't, I, you, should, you know, I, 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 I'm going to go through things. Every king, every, when the king speaks, it's done. He says, ask anything in my name, King Jesus, and I'll do it. He didn't say, when? Well, two days after I talked to the, talked to, talked to the Lord, King Jesus. Big eye I had went down. The pain the third day left without really doing anything. That's what I'm talking about, King Jesus. This happened about a couple of months ago or less. Three years ago, I had problems with my hand. The doctor said, oh, he had to cut it, either the medication or he had to cut it. And he was leaning on cutting, open my hand and doing something, cutting this tendon because I couldn't hardly move. It was hurting. 
I had to virtually take this thumb and pull it back. So it would, he said, no way. I told him, see, I'm bold. See, when I was in the world, I was bold. I had tenacity. I said what I had to say. You didn't like it. Get over it. God didn't change my boldness, my tenacity. He just changed my direction. That's powerful. So when I left the doctor's office and they figured I won't come back, no, that, that, uh, good luck with that, doc. Within a week, my hand was back to normal. And there's nothing I could have done about it. He did it. That's why I'm telling you, all you brothers and sisters out there in different parts of the country, different parts of the world, I want you to know, if you embrace the kingdom mess, I ain't talking about this religious stuff. And I want, I want you to understand something. A lot of religions that call themselves Christians and Baptists, they have the Constitution. They have the King's Constitution. And they, you can apply, they call it a religious book, but it's not. See, what, the re, what religion does for you, it, makes, it gives you a feel-good feeling. It gives you a feel-good feeling. Why you dying? Why you're suffering? Why you're about to leave this planet? A feel-good feeling. But in the kingdom government, the king can't take care of his own. But I want you to understand, know your purpose. See, God created, the Lord God created each and every, every one of us with a gift for a purpose, and we will discover that he'll give, a, give us our assignment. Are you feeling me here? He didn't create you just to get grow old, get get young, grow old, uh, run back and forth to the hospital or whatever, and then die. You have a purpose. That purpose is eternal. It helps others. Now, the kingdom government, his government was spoken of long before Jesus took up a body and came on the scene. Let's go to Isaiah. I spoke to this in one of our last sessions. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah, uh, book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter. Six and seven birth, birth, a verse. Now I want you to understand something. You hear this during the time of the pagan holiday called Christmas. Yeah, I said that, pagan holiday. That's exactly what it is. You know, if you want to honor it or worship it, fine. You want to celebrate, fine. See, in the kingdom, we only celebrate one thing. And see, and they're guessing when he was born. The Lord never told us to celebrate his birthday. That's why you don't know when he was born. They would have Moses celebrating and honoring and worshiping his grave if they knew where he was born, where he died. They, that's, that's the way people are. You know this symbol of the snake on this pole? Do you have any idea where that came from? It came from the people being disobedient, God sending down the snakes in them and the children of Israel, and they start biting them, and then they had to look at the snake on the pole that God saw with Moses, and then they were delivered. Did you hear me? Then they were delivered. So what does the man do today? And he says he don't believe in God. Where do you think the snake on the pole came from? God created that so they would look at the snake, the pole, pole the, the, the pole, or, or the snake on the pole, and live. That's why the symbol today is about healing, medical deliverance. Did you ever think of that? Man will take anything and worship it. Back in the time when, when and see, you, you got to understand the principles here. The kingdom principles are lined up in his word. Now, let's read about how God had the kingdom message. The king, the king, the, the government. Listen. For unto us 
a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. The government. The government. Not religion. The government will be upon his shoulders. He's king. Let us go on. And he says, and it will be called, and he will be called, now for all you out there, uh, you know, you get caught up in this color thing. You call it race. There's no only one race. It's human. And you get caught up in these color things, in the name, Yahweh, Jehovah. You get caught up in all of that. But if you take time to think and read and study his word, listen. Mm. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of all the increase of and of the increase of his government, listen now, of his government and peace, there will be no end. We're talking about future tense here. There will be no end. We go on. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, not religion, not religion. You know, I've learned, I've seen people they, uh, especially a lot of these preachers, they get, they get caught up in the title, doctor this, bishop this, prophet this. I've never seen and heard so many prophets. But what are they doing? Now, don't condemn them. Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world, but to what? Enlighten, fulfill it. But there will come a time when the king will bring it to that point. He'll be judged. So what you do now is going to weigh on the balance of scale at the end. Now let's go on. Now, I want you to understand something. For all of those of you that have a problem with Jesus, you know, especially you brothers out there in those land where you really are catching uh, pardon my friend, you're catching hell because you go under the title Christian instead of a saint or kingdom, a citizen of the kingdom. See, you don't have to give and talk about it and let people see your light shine. The word of God says, citizens, you're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. Live it. Let people question you on the lifestyle that you live and live according to his word. You, you don't have to pass out tracks. Man, Jack. Tracks is not going to do nothing for you if you live in a, a life of religion. You go to church on Sunday and go to Wednesday. That don't make you a, 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 a child of the king. Study the word. You know, I, I find it very um, strange that all Jesus spoke about when he came on the scene, John the Baptist was, was right in line with it. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, turn around. Check it out. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Ah, man. I want you, it's the urgent of it, especially you brothers in those countries in Solomon Islands and Thailand and South Korea. Embrace that word. Forget about religious, the churches. Embrace the word. And all you leaders out there that are listening to me, listen. Teach the message of the kingdom. That's why... The Lord God, the Holy Spirit had me, my wife and I, to create this website. And I'm writing all the time. Sometimes she complains, honey, you, it's too many pages here. You got to cut it in half. That's why we put in part one, part two, part three. But when you follow the leading of the spirit of the governor, 
You stay in line. I'm not here to please everybody. You'll never hear me get out and talk about asking for money. We may need, but God always provide. I'm not wasting my time on that. You get, hey, look, mega churches. People are hungry for the kingdom. They don't know it. They think that, you know, they're hungry. And they're being deceived. They're being deceived. Teach the kingdom word. Go on to the website. You have no excuse. And believe me, in the last days, you're going to be called accountable for that. You can see, the website was there. That's why I stay on the word. That's why I stay on the kingdom message. Look, I'm going to have to go now. But hey, my next session, we're going to be getting more into the kingdom message. Okay? Until next time.